Hi guys, good morning and uh, welcome back to the new video. So basically in the last video, in the last yesterday's video, we saw Stone Game 2. For sure, last video also I told you that Stone Game 1 and Stone Game 3 are much easier than the Stone Game 2. Although Stone Game 2 was medium marked, but still. It is actually like if you have done that, then I'll for sure recommend that try Stone Game 3. It's a high chance that you would be able to do it. Maybe some optimization stuff, I'll show you the entire recursion tree as we know. Other people just like just say okay, it's the recursion, but we actually make the recursion entire recursion tree and show you. Then actually go and memoize it, then bottom up, then actually optimize that. But cool. Uh, before that, let's have the problem statement itself. Um, I'll keep the energy low as you guys want, and let's have it quick. Cool. Alice and Bob continues their game with the piles of stones. Okay, Alice and Bob are, are the two players who have the piles of stones, and uh, stones are arranged in a row. Cool. Uh, that is done, and they have to play. And Alice starting first. Uh, the player he can choose he or she can choose one two or three stones cool uh, the score of each place is the sum of the values of the stones they have they have chosen now uh, initially the scores of all of them is zero cool um, they the objective of the game is to end with the highest score will everyone like anyone they wants to end the game with the highest score and the winner is the player with the higher score cool uh, the game continues until all the stones have not been taken so all the stones will get exhausted when the game ends. Uh, assume that both Alice and Boss plays optimally, which means both will try to maximize their score. And uh, return Alice if the Alice wins, which means Alice have a higher score than Bob. Return Bob if the Bob wins, which is, which, which which means that Bob has higher score than Alice. If both have them, both, both of them have same score, just return a tie. As we seen in the first example, we can choose one, two, or three stones. So Alice will try to choose the starting three stones, and then Bob will choose the last stone. Then for sure, no matter what, Alice will have a score of six, and Bob will have a score of seven. Still, Bob will have a higher score. Bob will win. In the next example, Alice will try to choose the starting three scores. Uh, her score will become six. Bob's score is minus nine. Alice's score is more. Alice will win. In the next example, um, Alice will try to choose the starting three scores. Her score is six. Bob's score is six. Both have the same score. It's a tie. That is how we have to just do. So basically, if we just saw, okay, Aryan, you just took starting three. Why not one? Why not two? Yeah, for sure. We will take one, two, which means we will try for every possible option. Option we have, the first player have the option. He or she can take, although it's Alice, uh, so she can take first, like starting only one stone and the remaining it will leave on to Bob that, okay, how the Bob want to optimize, which means maximize um, his difference. I'll say, I'll show you what's a, what I mean by maximizing the difference. Basically, what I want is, okay, I want to choose to bring out the maximum score of me, which means I will just try to bring out, okay, what is the maximum possible difference I can bring from me and Bob? which means Alice and Bob. If if this, I will just increase and this decrease. So basically this difference part will for sure maximize. Thus, rather than increasing this individually and decreasing this individually, I can just increase this difference itself and that will work. So rather than operating on both of them, I can just operate on the difference part of the scores. Thus, I can just easily say, okay, if the at last the difference is positive, which means Alice won, if it is negative, the Bob won, if it is equal, then it's a tie. Cool. Now, what I do is initially, when I have these stones, then for the first one, Alice for the first one, she has two options. She can choose one stone, which means take one stone. She can choose two stones and she can choose three stones, right? And if she choose one stone, the remaining part, it is in the hands of Bob now, but Bob also will try to maximize his score, which means, which means if Alice get this stone, so her value will be added by this value, her in total value will be added by this value minus what Bob will try to maximize by this difference. Now, Aaron, why this difference? Because see, ultimately whatsoever, if Bob, let's say Alice chooses this, Bob chooses this, Let's say Bob chooses this and then Alice chooses this. If I just saying this difference, so it is nothing but B minus A, which is actually, and this, this was A also. So it is A minus B minus A. So basically Alice's is, is being added and Bob's is being subtracted in recursion itself. Thus, I can just simply do one thing. I can just try for all three of possible options. Take one score, one stone, two stone and three stone and whatsoever maximum difference I can get, I can just grab that maximum difference. Cool. So for sure, I started with this initial array of stones. Cool. Then in the initial, Alice has a chance. She will take either one stone. Cool. Okay. One stone, two stones, or basically three stones. If she takes one stone, now remaining part 
is to be decided by Bob. That he will try to maximize his difference. Cool. If she choose two stones, the remaining part will be uh, decided by Bob. If she choose three, then the remaining part by Bob. Now, the remaining part by the Bob. So, for sure, he has only one. So, he will try to take that one. Now, Bob will get that one. I will come back to the recursion tree. But yeah, right now we are going down. Which means we are trying to choose all the possible options. We will come back also. Wait a minute. Cool. Now, in this option, if we saw, okay, Alice choose one. Now, Bob has again chance of choosing either one or two or three. Again, Bob choose one. Bob choose two. Bob choose three. Again, the part, it went to Alice to choose. Again, it, it went to Alice to choose. And here, it just exhausted. So, no worries. Here again, Alice has two options to choose one or to choose two. Alice choose one. Alice choose two. Exhausted. But still, here, it has one options. Okay. Just grab one. Cool. Then, Bob grabbed one. Here also, as we were here, the Bob has two options. Choose one. Choose two. Bob choose one. Bob choose two. Exhausted. Cool. No worries. Then again, it's a chance of Alice. Choose one. And thus, it is done. Now, okay. It is how we saw that, okay, Alice and Bob's. And that's the reason I just use different colors to show you, okay, what is Alice is grabbing and what is Bob is grabbing. Alice is grabbing uh, the blue ones and the Bob is grabbing the green ones. Now, as we are going back, what I wanted is to bring maximum from me. So, as it was the last chance for Bob, so he will try to push in the maximum, which is the 7. Now, as it went up, now, it is the chance of Alice to maximize, which means maximizes, which means A, which means Alice score minus the Bob score. Bob score, which came as maximum from bottom was 7. So, her score was 3 right now for this part. So, 3 minus 7 is minus 4. That's the reason it will just can push in minus 4. But here, this case, Alice can have a score of 10. So, why not? I, if, I, if Alice is there at this point of time, then Alice will choose a minus 4 or 10. For sure, 10, right? So, Alice will just push in this 10. So, from this point, from this point, Alice pushed in 10 because it is a maximum score she can get. While in this case, while, okay, let's go up the tree initially. Now, while in this case, if I just go on, that, okay, here, the maximum score pushed in by Alice is 10, but Bob's want to maximize it. So, he has a 2. So, 2 minus 10, it is minus 8. Thus, Bob is pushing in minus 8 because it is a score he can get. But, 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 if we just go on to the next tree, then here we know, okay, it was the last chance of Alice. It, it is the only score she can achieve. So, she, she pushed in this 7. Now, this 7 got pushed, but Bob has to maximize. So, Bob will say, okay, my score is 5. Alice brought her score maximum because it was Alice's chance next. But Alice brought her score maximum as 7. So, I can push in 5 minus 7, which is minus 2. Okay, it is my score which I can push it at this point. While at this point, when Bob chooses all 2, 3 and 7, he can push in the 12. For sure. Cool. Then you easily see that, okay. Now, it was the Bob chance at these at this point. At this point, it was the Bob chance. So, out of minus 8, minus 2 and 12, Bob will try to push in the maximum. Because he won't maximize. Thus, Bob will try to push in the 12. Cool. If he just go on to the next tree, then what happened? It was the chance of as simple as that. It... It pushed in, Alice pushed in 7, maximum score. Bob tried to push in 3 minus 7, which is minus 4. Um, again, Bob can also push in a 3 plus 7, which is 10. Then out of this, Bob can actually push in the 10, which is the maximum score. And thus, if it just goes up, it is the Alice score. It is a Bob score, which is coming up as 10. Then it just goes up as 3 minus 10. 3 minus 10 as minus 7. Sorry, this is minus 7. Now, as it goes up, cool. Other has option. It is 6. It is 7, which is the Bob is bringing up the score as 7. It is 6 and 7. The score which goes up is minus 1. Now, at this point, Alice, Alice, Alice she is getting either minus 11, minus 7 or minus 1. She will try to maximize hers. That is minus 1. Now, ultimately, the maximum difference which Alice can achieve is a minus 1. I am saying. Alice can achieve a maximum difference of minus 1. But still, the difference is minus 1. So, which is Alice minus Bob is actually a negative number. Thus, for sure, Alice lost. But for sure, we tried to maximize the maximum Alice difference. Which means, it is 6 minus 7. 6 is the maximum score for Alice, which Alice can get. Cool. That is how you can actually build your recursion tree. Which means, recursion is going down while coming back, it is computing up. Cool. Now, 
we easily saw what the recursion was doing and we easily saw okay at this point i had to compute for three like starting from three and so on and so forth right at this point also i saw that i need to compute from this part so we can easily see that it has a repeating sub problem for sure and also here it just start had to start from this last part and here also that's from the last part so also you can see repeating sub problem and we can so okay for sure we saw the above recursion it has a repeating sub problem and for sure it's a memoization case which means i will just firstly try to build my recursion tree which means the simple recursion and then i will just try to memoize it by a simple three dp steps cool simple recursion and a simple apply apply memoization just see the simple recursion as simple as that what we saw in the above logical intuition and logic just implementing the same stuff how simply asking for the value this value is nothing but the difference asking for the difference starting with the index zero and passing in the stone value because we need the array itself now ultimately what i will do the difference if it is more than zero for sure alice one less than zero above one same time now comes the main interesting part which is recursion for sure i will end up start with the index zero now what will happen as i said base case simply okay let's have this base case because see this is basically very, very simple you are just seeing okay if i has not reached your array bound and array is nothing but stone value so stone value is the n size so if it has not reached until then you can just move your eye cool now for sure i had three options take one take two and take three now if i take one which means i take the current element so i take the stone one stone one stone i and then i just said okay bring out the other the other player just bring out the maximum score you can get if you just start from the next index because i grab the i you just grab from the i plus one then bring out the maximum you, you can achieve because for sure other player will try to bring out the maximum he or she can achieve now if i take that two then i will just check firstly a standard condition that because you are accessing another element next to you so it should actually exist that's the reason i'm just having a small check okay if it is actually existing or not and then i will just grab the sum of the two value which means right now i'm standing at i and i plus one i have taken the stones two stones and then i just ask other player to bring out from the next stone what you can get maximum and same for the if i take three then i just take the three stones and then ask the other player to bring out the maximum from the like uh, the, from the i plus third stone that is how i will take all the three stones which means all the possible options you see stone 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 now it is a recursion now while coming up which means when the recursion is done while coming up i just choose the maximum out of all the options i can have that is how i can just simply return my answer which means i tried all the possible options and grab the maximum difference but 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 we easily saw that it was the case of recursion with memoization which means if we have a repeating problem so for sure we will try to optimize it we, we, we will try to memoize it how we will do it simple three step dp steps firstly a dp of i we just firstly firstly we initialized our dp now you will say i why not we initialize it with minus one because we saw the dp is storing the values and values is nothing but the difference now difference it can be negative also it can be minus one also so i can't initialize this with minus one i can initialize this with something which is not possible int max is not possible because i just want to grab the maximum difference possible and it can't go beyond the limits of which like the, the constraints uh, the constraints limit it can't go beyond that cool so i just grabbed it with intimax you can also choose any other number which is you see it's not viable in this it's just to show okay if that number has not occurred before now it is occurring before now it is occurring so how you have to do it cool uh you just initialize your db as simple as that before going on the recursion just check if that dp has not minus int max as the value which means it has been overridden which means it has come already so just dp of i and a simple return while returning just please populate your dp also and that will simply help you just memoize these steps and your complexity will become simply o of n and spaces o of n now 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 Arin, um, that looks nice that looks great uh, for sure the code is below for you guys to actually understand and copy the notes are also down below but 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 can we optimize it can we optimize it is it possible but if you want to think of even optimization you have to actually convert this code to a bottom-up approach which means a tabulation approach so then only you can actually think okay is it possible to actually optimize it or not so as simple as that i'll just copy paste the entire stuff i'll just copy paste the entire stuff see i will just entirely copy paste this stuff these are the three steps right 
I just entirely copy paste. I'm saying entirely copy paste this part down below. Simple, simple, as simple as that. You will see. I initialize my DP for sure. As it's uh, linear, so I just initialize with uh, zero as it is being grab. You no worries. You can just have anything what you want. Uh, now, as you saw, it was going from index zero and then going up till end and then coming back. Thus, I know. Okay, it is coming back because it needed. It needed. You saw right. It needed the value of i plus two, i plus three, i plus one, like this. So it will go up till end and then it will just bring these values from the end. Thus, I know it has to go up till end and then because it's a recursion, which means it goes up till end and then come back. Now, when it is coming back from n minus one, which means I started recursion with i equal to zero, I will start my bottom up with i equal to n minus one because I am coming back. Now, coming backwards from n minus one to zero, first option, as simple as that. I just grab one, I just grab two, grab three. Exactly same code. Exactly same code you will see. Exactly same code you will see. Exactly same code. It's just that rather than recursion, like recursion wala part, I just actually write the DP itself because DP has been computed. DP has been computed. DP has been computed. Are you how? Because you are going from back. If you are computing I, then I plus one, I plus two, and I plus three had already been computed. That is the reason I am going backwards and exactly same exactly same code as it is entirely same and at last this code is also entirely same because we know our answer is actually stored at dp of zero because you know in the recursion you were going from i equal to zero that is the reason your answer was stored at dp zero thus I can just simply simply exactly same code here also I can simply say I converted my entire recursion without even writing without even modifying very much code like I just modified very few lines or like very few words itself and I just converted my entire code to the DB iterative DB or the bottom of DB same the time and space both are exactly same but 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 if we just go back and clearly look then we can easily see for computing my DP of I I just only need my DP of I plus one I plus two and I plus three no other DP state is being used right correct so why to actually store this entire DP array why to initialize this with entire DP, right? As simple as that. So I can maybe reduce the space from O of n to O of three, which is constant, which is O of one. I can actually reduce it. Yeah, I can. Why? Because I am actually for this DP, if I am only using DP five plus one, I plus one, I plus three. I can just have a simple DP array of three size and that would work. Or I can have a three variables and it will also work. So you can have anything, just three variables, a array of size three, anything, but it's constant space. Thus, I can easily say that, okay, I just did a very, very, very small modification. I just made a DP array of size three because I know it should only require three. Then every point I know, okay, it needs to compress to a size three. I compress everything because see, you saw it was I plus one, I plus two, I plus three. I compress it into a three size, which is more three, more three, more three. As simple as that, and also i is also more three. Just these modifications, just these three simple or four simple modifications actually converted your space from O of n to actually O of one. That is how you optimize your space from O of n to O of one, and that is your time finally optimized DP is actually O of n space of O of one. And code of C plus Java and Python is down below. I hope that you guys liked it. I tried to keep it short and simple. Um, but like actually for sure, uh, we actually make every VC. The only difference between us and others is that we make the entire recursion tree. We explain the entire recursion tree. I would have just spoken, okay, just have the recursion. Okay, it is the one pair, it is another pair and then make the recursion. But if you just make the recursion tree entirely, then it actually shows that, okay, how the things are working. That's the reason we just spend time on that part. But yeah, cool. That is all. Uh, see you guys in the video. Goodbye. Take care.